Welcome to the Live Well, Perform Better podcast, brought to you by Below the Line. My name is David Duggan, and I am part of a team made up of experts from the worlds of business, elite sport, adventure, and health and well-being. We are coaches, mentors, and advisors to some of the world's biggest companies and organizations, as well as smaller businesses, entrepreneurs, and people looking to make their mark on the world. Our guiding mantra at Below the Line is live well, perform better. What does that mean, you might ask? Good question. Maybe the easiest way to describe it from our perspective is finding the formula that works for you when it comes to things like looking after your physical and mental health, running your business, developing your career, leading your people, or simply being able to show up as brilliantly as possible into your own life, both for yourself and those around you. That's why each week I sit down with a member of our team or an invited guest for a conversation that focuses on the question, what do the words live well, perform better mean to you? This question is a way into exploring with people from a range of different backgrounds, industries and disciplines, what are the practices, techniques, habits or ideas that they use to help them to show up and be at their best in all areas of their lives, whether that's as CEOs, leaders or managers, or as parents, family members or friends. We keep it short and sweet so that you can extract all the good stuff and get on with the rest of your day and hopefully put some of this knowledge, experience and expertise into play for yourself. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by another very special guest, Rob Cullen. Rob is a well-known and popular figure within the Dublin business community, due to his long-standing association with the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, where he spent seven years leading and managing its members' events and engagements, alongside teaching people how to network and build their own personal brands. Rob is equally well-known for the massive change he made in his own lifestyle six years ago, when along with his wife Yvonne, they managed to lose 13 stone between them and in the process completely overhauled the quality of their own lives and that of their family. Rob has recently embarked on his latest challenge as the Director of Business Development with the Knoll Group and he very generously took time out of his schedule to share his story with me and in the process tell me what his weight loss journey has taught him about himself and life as well as what others can learn from his experience and put into practice when making and implementing change in their personal or professional lives. This was an inspiring conversation, all about the importance of taking action towards the goals and ambitions that are meaningful to you, why accountability on your change journey matters, and why the one thing that anyone looking to change something in their lives or business must give up are excuses. You can subscribe at www.belowtheline.ie where you can stay up to date with our podcast as well as exclusive online events and sessions, including our Press Pause coaching community and our story coaching programs. Thanks for listening and see you next week. I, I, maybe I think the best place to start is, um, and it's a story you've told me, and I know you've, you've shared it elsewhere, but it really resonated with me when you, when you told it to me, was just the the story of the phoenix park um Mm -hmm. and where that took you or the journey that that took you on yeah i suppose it was i mean it it was a funny story and and it was when we decided to lose the weight first was in around that weekend we had just come back from a a week or four or five days at a wedding in spain yeah and we've been looking at you know different videos and photographs of the wedding and you kind of you i know nobody's really happy looking at their own photographs but you're a bit like oh that looks a bit ropey and what sort of facial expression was I making in that one and and you're going through them all and I just there was too many of them that I just thought look I need to do something this is not right like the way it was looking there was a video then of me coming across the dance floor now I can't dance anyway and Yvonne would always say that I can't dance but I try I do try do a little bit but wherever way it came across like it was just it seemed to be take forever before it came across the screen. Um, and that was because of the size of me at the time. So we came back from the wedding in Spain. The kids, the lads, uh, Liam and Tommy were down in, in their grandparents in Chapel Lizard. But when we got there, they weren't there. They were down in the Phoenix Park. So we went down to see them, to collect them. And they were down near enough to the Pope's Cross. So the lads were running down the hill. They see myself and Yvonne. So they start running towards us. And I started running towards them and I just couldn't, I wasn't able to. Now it was the week of probably drinking food and booze and partying and everything at the wedding. 
But it was just that sort of funny moment when I had to stop when you look up and you see the Pope's cross. And I always tell the story, like, I'm not really a religious person. I was born in 1979, and I know that the Pope visited in 1979 because my mom left myself and my twin sister at home with my dad while she went down to the park. Right. But it was just that moment where you look up and you see, you know, the Pope's cross. And it's that sort of, you know, moment of madness where you think, right, that's it. I was stuck. It stitches in the side of my stomach. And I was like, no, I need to do something. And maybe that's somebody or something trying to tell me that I have to do something now. And we did, funny enough, that was, I think, the Sunday or the Monday. And then on Tuesday, you know, straight away, we were we had signed up to go up to the Slimming World to start. Um, and we just made that conscious decision, right, something has to change. And we're not doing it next week and we're not doing it tomorrow. We're actually doing it now straight away. We checked out where we could go, where the nearest one to us was. I had heard actually a few stories about it that were being good. I knew a couple of lads, especially lads. You know, it's, those type of groups are always predominantly you know, crowded with women. So it was mm. it was unusual to find a couple of lads, but I knew a couple of lads down the same paths in Inchicord that had lost weight. And I thought, you know, if they can do it, maybe I can as well. And that's probably why we joined there. And that was that was the start of it really at the at the Pope's cross moment. Yeah, yeah. And I, again from from conversations that we've had in the past, I think Jerry Hussey and hearing him speak in the chamber at the time yeah. um, may have just kind of, did that light the fuse or was that before or after? Yeah, or? there was a couple of things. And actually I spoke to a guy this week and I shared that story with him that Jerry had, had told. It was actually at the All Around Business Summit. So it was in around, I know that's at the being on this week as well because I yeah. was at it. And, and Jerry told a couple of different stories and I'd seen them at the chamber as well. Yeah. Um, and they were the few stories about how many months you have left. So say 990 months or something like that. But the, yeah. the two things that caught me were he told us, he, he, he asked the question, if your eight year old self walked in and you could speak to them, would they be happy how you're looking, where you're working, who you're married to? That was probably the only one there that I tick a box and say, yeah, the eight year old self would definitely be happy who I'm married to. But how you're looking, what you're eating, where you're working, what you're drinking, you know, everything about yourself, your health, how you're coming across, all that sort of stuff, would they be happy? And like those questions, I think like nine out of 10 of them, I was like, definitely not, definitely not, definitely not. And I knew something had to change. And it was just when you brought back to that, because when I was eight, I was like my lads are now, they're out playing football, they're always running around, they're always out and about, very physical, very fit. And I was probably like that as well, you know, always out and about, like we all were probably in, I was eight in 1987, so all of us were mad into football, et cetera, et cetera. And you kind of think, you know what, what's happened over those last few years? How did I get to the stage where I'm nearly 21 stone? So yeah. there was definitely a case of that. And Jerry told the other story as well. And, and, and that was the story, story I told a guy this week was um, about a, a girl going to, the, going to her wedding and she's sitting in the wedding car. And on the way to the church, she just veers into the left to visit her father in the graveyard because he was a smoker or a heavy drinker or he was overweight, but he had passed away before. So her, her brother or her uncle or her cousin had to walk her down the aisle. Um, and it was just those stories that actually... It becomes real then. Now, I don't have any daughters of two boys, but it did make me think, you know what? I think the message was, and the message that I always try and put, a, put across to people is don't look at what you can do in the next six weeks, the next six months. You have a wedding coming up. You have a holiday coming up. All these quick fixes don't work. It's thinking so far ahead, and it could be 20, 30 years ahead by the time your kids get married. But that's how far ahead you want to look. So you need to change it now for in 20 years time. It won't be too late. You know, all those quick fixes. And it really made you think that those quick fixes don't work. And, and I was thinking long term. And that was one thing, I suppose, that we we took on board straight away. We're not trying to get any sort of quick fixes because I probably lost 10 pounds on 10 different diets over 10 years, you know, but nothing ever lasted. And um, so it was more of that long term thinking, changing a few things that are consistent you know, that are easy to, to become new habits. And I suppose we're six years later and, and we're still at the same thing. So it's still working. We've lost the weight and kept it off. So, Yeah, yeah. And that's what I think makes you stand out from an awful lot of people, which is it seemed to me like you, you got the idea that this isn't, as you said, a quick fix. This is kind of whole scale lifestyle change without that overwhelming you. Oh, yeah. And, and it was always that it was never anything extreme. It was just something that's consistent, something that's sustainable. So if you're doing something, 
I always I always say like, can you do it in two weeks time? Can you do it in two months time? Can you do it in two years time? And anything that we changed, we were able to. So it was cutting out some stuff, cutting down on other stuff, you know, moving a little bit more, all the basic stuff that we all really know, but just sometimes don't do or don't do consistently. And I think that consistency is good. So, you know, we don't really have takeaways, but we might have the odd slice of pizza. You know, we don't really have drink, but you might have the odd gin and tonic or, or a glass of Prosecco if you're at something. But it's 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 everything is odd. Everything is moderate. And it's not like you're cutting out all the fun in your life. And, and some people would have thought that as well. It's not like it, we were at the stage where we, we were together 20 odd years. We've done all the partying. We've done all the summer holidays. We've done everything. You now have two boys and your priorities change. Um, and it wasn't even when we gave up the booze, it wasn't so much, you know, we were drinking a hell of a lot. It's more to do with what you actually eat, you know, before you have the booze, while you're having the booze and probably after you have the booze as well, whether it's the night of the booze on your way home or the next day when you need to get up for soakage and then you decide to get a takeaway and everything else. So we decided look to cut out that sort of chance of that happening. Let's just stop drinking and see how we go. And it was fine. The other thing uh, that strike, strikes me as I'm listening to you is yourself and Yvonne and it was a joint decision and you both went into it, you know, both feet first. That seems to have been pretty key as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, again, a, a big sort of tip that I'd give anybody, if you can partner up with somebody to do anything that you're trying to do, I mean, like you always see it, people are going hiking or cycling or swimming or, you know, not too many people go for a sea swim on their own. They'll always partner up. So it's the same idea. It's you're there to support each other. So, you know, I mightn't feel like a walk last night, but Yvonne is saying, no, let, let's go for a walk. You know, you, you, we'd be glad you did. Are you doing that little bit of exercise? Or you think, you know, after a hard day at work, you think, oh, let's just make whatever for dinner. And Yvonne would, generally Yvonne is a good leader and that she's like, no, we left out this, this is what we're going to have. Yeah. We we always do a plan on a Sunday night. So we know what we're having for dinner. We don't make it. We just have the menu if you like. And I always say to people when they're planning their menu, if you're not excited about it on a Sunday night, you won't be excited about it on the Wednesday. So make sure there's a bit of variety and all that sort of stuff. And we do. And, and Yvonne generally does a lot of the cooking um, and would make fantastic meals. But it's that sort of, that push that sometimes you need, oh, let's just get a pizza. And you want to be like, no, we've took out the chicken breast. I'm going to make it yeah. homemade curry. This is what we're having. And then we we go ahead and do it. So it's, it's that support and that accountability as well. And accountability is huge in anything, whether it's in business or in life, you know, whether you're trying to run a sales team or you're trying to lose weight, having that accountability at the, at the end of the week to to report to somebody to, to weigh in and say, you know, this is where I am on the scales or this is where I am with my numbers or whatever it might be. But even if, even if you're accountable to yourself, still having that accountability always works well. But the two of us together, we're, we're still trying to compete with each other, but in, yeah. a, in a friendly way, we're still, still trying to support each other as much as we can. And, and I know I definitely wouldn't have lost the weight without Yvonne. Yeah, yeah. She feels the same. <laughs> I'll have to ask her myself. Yeah. Um, uh, can I ask you then, um, what was the hardest part of all of it? Making the decision to do it? Was it the first couple of weeks when you were withdrawn from stuff? Or Yeah, I think so. And I think it's just that acting upon it. And I know where, you yeah. know, you can read so many books and listen to so many podcasts. And this, again, is probably a lesson in anything you're trying to do. And we always take in all these. And I know I'm a great lover of reading books or listening to them on Audible. You know, all that you know, knowledge is power and information is power, but it's kind of a lie. You really need to act upon it. So anything that you read, again, no matter what it is and what walk of life, you have to actually have to act upon those, that information that you've took in and actually do the things. So it's one thing knowing what we have to do, but actually doing it, you know, can be hard. And, and everybody puts things off and everybody, you know, says, oh, should I do it Monday or I'll do it tomorrow? I'm all right doing this now. I'll start then. It's actually just acting upon it and doing it um, and, and just doing it as quick as you can, you know, not, not thinking too hard about it. And I think that's what happened at the start. And we, we'd all, we, we, we still do it now. And it's that five second rule, you know, where if you're, we go for a run, count down to five, from five to zero and nine times out of 10, you're gone. It's the thought of doing things that actually are harder and actually doing it once you get started. You know, I mean, I remember when I was, we done an abseil and down Smithfield Tower and I'm terrified of heights and the thought of it for the weeks upon weeks, the build up to it was actually yeah. worse. Even going up the steps on it were, were a bit worse, but actually once you 
came off the building it was fine like there was a great view there was a like you were like free yeah. fall and climbing down the, the building and i'm there terrified of heights but actually thinking actually maybe i'm just terrified of the thoughts of actually doing something like that they always see it with skydivers they'll always say oh no i'll never do it but actually they're always smiling and screaming when they're coming down and it's generally screams of joy yeah. because it's so good it's more the thoughts of actually doing something but once you once you act upon it straight away i think it makes it a little bit easier Talk to me about the the first uh, Slimming World meeting, going there with your wife. Yeah, I think the, it, was, it was good. And, and Yvonne always laughs. So I was probably very much at home and that there was about 50 women and me there. So it was, you know, never, never want to shy away from a group of women. And, and again, part of the job that I do, as you know, is, is presenting at events yeah. and, and hosting events and presenting wherever in, in a boardroom. So I'm, the public speaking side of it is, is grand. I'm... I'm no bother to meet to stand up and speak, but actually taking in what people are saying and the listening. And I found it really good just the listening um, to what other people's solutions were, what, what issues they had as well. And again, it's nearly like a brainstorming session. So we we done that for about probably about a year and a year, just over a year, a year and a half, and learned so much from it. And then took, you know, what we learned and, and put it into our own thing now. So we haven't been in in probably five, four or five years now, but we learned an awful lot from it. But the, the first time was hard and, and you're always thinking, you know, there's got to be more men coming. There's, but I remember seeing one of the girls there lost seven and a half stone and I was amazed that somebody could lose that amount of weight. And I kind of always used that girl as the model of who you, you want yeah. to try and put yourself up against. And I actually went, it took a year and a half, but I did top, I think I lost seven stone, 10 in the end and I, I topped her by two or three pounds or something like that um, so it, it wasn't a target if you like at the start but it was kind of in the back of my mind thinking I could actually I think I could do that but I, we always took it slow and that it was a couple of pounds a week a pound and a half a week two pound a week and over it took us over the course of 104 104 weeks I lost 104 pound so it was a pound a week it, it worked out at wow. obviously some weeks were up some weeks were down but the, the 104 weeks, yeah, 104 pound, it, it, it evened itself out. <laughs> um, and what about those weeks when you were up, uh, when you thought you'd be down? I mean, how do you, how do you yeah, get over and, that? Yeah, and, and, and that hit me, I think, in, in week two, I, I was like, because I was out doing exercise, I was skipping at home, I was doing weights, I was doing everything. Um, and I don't know what happened. I think, yeah, week two, I, week two, I, I ended up going up a pound or two and, and I didn't know what happened. And there... It's like everything. It's how you deal with that rejection, how you get up and, and react quicker. And mm. I think the following week, then I lost six pounds. So it was yeah. three weeks into it, I'd lost a half a stone. So you forget about that two pound you went up the previous week. But uh, it is hard. It, it's hard to deal with rejection. But if anybody's gone through any sort of journey of trying to lose weight or any sort of weight issues, whether it's putting on weight or, or losing weight, there's always rejection in it. There's always bad weeks. And it's, I mean, it's like that, whether you're in a sales role, you're in recruitment, there's always, there's always um, bad weeks. And, and it's how you react to that, how you pick yourself up. The easiest thing to do then, you know, we were, we were down in, it was August 26, 2016 when we started. We went down to a mobile in Wexford for a week. And again, we made sure we stayed on that journey. So we had all the food with us that we needed. We were topping up on, you know, the, the healthier stuff, the fruits, the, the the vegetables, you know, plenty of bottles of water, cutting out the likes of the tortilla crisps and all that sort of yeah. stuff as well. And actually went went to weigh in in a hotel in Gory um, just to keep the momentum going. And that was the first half stone. And I always think I use it as that sort of, you know, breakaway week that, if I didn't get that that week and I wasn't, I didn't lose that amount of weight yeah. that week, would I have continued? Um, and it was a totally new hotel, totally new group of people. But I just, we just went for it because we were away and we'd only joined. We didn't want to miss a week. Uh, and both of us glad we did because both of us actually lost, I think, a half stone that week. Um, or we'd reach our half stone target and it was only after three weeks. So you're kind of thinking, just it's really working. We should really continue doing it, you know, and there's no reason why we can't. If we're on holidays and we can still do it, there's no reason why we can't continue. Yeah. It sounds to me like you kind of took away your last excuse almost. Yeah. And look, I say, look, everybody, everybody asks, oh, what did you give up? And what did you, you yeah. know, what did you cut down on? The one thing I definitely gave up and you have to give up is excuses. 
you need to give up those excuses because you'll always find an excuse. I have a wedding coming up. It's Easter. Oh, it's Paddy's week. Oh, Christmas is around the corner. I'm going to a 40th. There's always an excuse to run them up to, to, to go off plan if you like. And you'll always find an excuse and you'll always use that reason as an excuse. The truth is those occasions come and go and you don't need to use them as excuses. Like we still go out with friends. We're out this weekend for a meal with friends and we'll have... You know, we'll have a, a a nice meal. We won't be too cautious of what we're eating. Yeah. But you're back on plan then again the, the next day. You're back cooking at home. You're back having your, your healthy breakfast, your healthy lunch, you know. And it's all, nowadays, it's just so normal. You know, it, it's not, you know, anything different. And it's not like you're drinking cabbage soup or you're drinking yeah. protein shakes or slim fast or any of these things. You're just actually eating real food you know, and enjoying what you're cooking and enjoying what you're eating. But you'll always find an excuse to eat that or to, you know, to to, to drink that or wherever it might be. You know, there's always excuses. There's always occasions. It's actually accommodating them into and, and incorporating them into your plan and what you're doing will help you work better. You, you touched on this earlier, but um, going to Slimming World and, and men, you know, what's your reflection on that experience and what men you know, maybe are shutting themselves off from or potentially open themselves up to by by doing something like that? I think we see in, in any type of, you know, health issues with men, whether it's mental health, physical health, you know, men and, and me included are terrible at speaking about how we feel or speaking, you know, about, you know, illnesses or conditions we might have or going to the doctor. I'm terrible at going to the doctor. I'm terrible at going to the dentist. I'm terrible at, you know, admitting that somewhere I have pain somewhere. Like, you know, and we're all a bit like that. And we need as as men, and, and look, we've seen over the last few years, and I've been to plenty of different talks and, and spoke at different events. And some some of the, the fellow speakers have been brilliant around mental health. Jerry Hussey Soul Space, when, when we spoke, Brent Pope was speaking at it, yeah. Prezi was speaking about, at it. And all brilliant guys speaking up about mental health. And I think the more of that, the better that actually especially around men men are very slow at coming forward with any issues that they have and even when i post something on, on my be it on twitter or linkedin or, or even yvonne has an instagram page you know generally it's more women on behalf of their husbands or partners that are reaching out looking for that help or you'll get somebody reaching out to you on linkedin quietly you know asking for that help i got your name from here uh, and i'm always open to help people i love helping people whether it's in work when i'm out networking making connections business connections introducing people to each other as you know trying to you know yeah. connect people together to do business and and the fulfillment I get from that is probably similar to the fulfillment that I get from helping somebody lose weight. And there's been numerous amount of lads over the years that have lost two, three, four, five stone, you know, that would just have an initial chat with you, maybe a follow-up chat. You're always on on the other end of a call for them. But actually, some of them are just, you yeah, actually, I heard your story or read your story or seen you on something and you just inspired me to do something different. I met a guy, a pendulum, a well-known guy that I'd met before and said he was after losing 35, 40 kilos. Yeah. And he said, look, you were just that inspiration to get me going. And it's that sort of thing that people can relate to. You're just a normal person. You're not this mad fitness person that never had a weight issue. And, you know, fitness people are, are great at telling people what they, they should do. But I don't mm -hmm. think they're, I don't think people like me that were 20 stone could relate to them. I, yeah. I actually seen a guy in the Slim World magazine seven years ago and he was from Luska. I can never remember his name, but I, I do remember reaching out to him on some sort of platform like Twitter or LinkedIn yeah. and just said, look, I read your story in the Slim World magazine. And it was nearly to see if you were a real person because it was yeah. that sort of, you know, is this person really real? said that he lived in Lusk and I actually reached out to him and he just gave me a few tips, you know, and there were simple things like never go hungry, stay for those meetings, support each other if you can, you know, again, look, I'm, I'm here if you need to help. And he had lost, I think, something colossal, 10 or 12 stone. But the fact that it, it was somebody that you could relate to, to me, it was much more relatable than, you know, your Joe Wicks of the world or whatever, even though I yeah. love doing Joe Wicks workouts and we have probably five or six of his books. Yeah. But I, I couldn't relate to that, those type of people, those personal trainers, those fitness fanatics, because I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, you know, a, a size or a, a 12, 13 stone man looking to tone up, looking to get a six pack, looking to have big muscles or anything like that. I needed to lose weight. And for yeah. me, I needed somebody that had been there, done that. 
that could yeah. actually prove that it could be done. Not yeah. necessarily show me, like we know what to do. It's actually acting upon it, but actually seeing that it can be done makes you believe it more. That has also struck me on seeing you on social media and all that stuff. Like you're very open with your story mm -hmm. and you've just, you just put yourself out there and you've kind of given it away for free. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering what has that taught you and what have you gotten back from doing that? You've already articulated some of that stuff, but you know, you haven't turned this into a book. You haven't turned it into no. a program. You've just said, I'll talk to anyone who can, who wants to listen. Yeah. I think there's, there's a look, we, we could have monetized it in many different ways, you know, and we'd always get sent stuff that you, you may want to sample products and stuff like that. Or you get asked to speak and things. But I think the bottom line is both of us, both Mr. Yvonne works for the HSE. Obviously, I'm now in recruitment, having yeah. come from Dublin Chamber for the last sort of 10 years between being a member and working there for seven. Yeah. Um, and I just get great fulfillment from helping people from and, and people like I always found, you know, these guys are coming along saying look we'll you can have a consultation but it's 60 100 euro and for me that was always you know too much and what am i going to get from it and i think if people start paying they want to you know they, they want the results they want and i'm not offering that sort of service i'm just here to talk to people to share the story to give a few tips and i've done it, as i say for a numerous amount of people men and women yeah. mainly men sometimes couples but it's just people are looking for that help and it's there, but they're not even looking for help. They're looking for that guidance. They're looking for that inspiration. They're looking for that sort of idea that actually there's a couple over there that lost 13 stone. We can actually do that too. It's not impossible, you know, and it's just trying to help people because we've been those soldiers. We, we, we were in that place and it's not a nice place to be in. So I think to try and monetize it just wouldn't have been something that we wanted to do. Yeah. Yes, you might get offered money to speak at different events. Sometimes I don't, to be honest with you, more of the wellness events that I speak at, we would be doing for free anyway. And it, it's just to, to share the story. It's not, we, we never went there. And you'll always find people speaking at events that have a product or a service to sell. Yeah. We never did. It was always, look, follow Yvonne on Instagram. She has plenty of recipes, plenty of tips. You know, some of the recipes have plenty of sugar in them as well. Like we, we, we've moved into doing a lot of bakery stuff as well. So there's, there's yeah. loads of stuff like that as well. But it's 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 just the, the, the tips and advice that people can use or choose to, to use or not to use. But I don't think there's for, for us, it just didn't it didn't sit right to try and, you know, monetize it. We, we set yeah. up the website. But again, it was just recipes, tips, advice, videos, you know, anything like that. If you need the help, if you're looking for the help reach out to us we're at the end like we're, we're human beings that are here to, to talk you and help you and if having a conversation with me for 30 minutes is going to help somebody just start you know on a journey yeah. i mean i think it's it's job done it's it, it it gives me great fulfillment and i think people have always been great at coming back and saying look i've lost two stone thanks so much for your help you changed my life and i've had so many so many messages like that on, on the likes of linkedin and, and twitter and, and instagram that people will come back to you and say look you've no idea actually where I was and how yeah. I've and how where I've come to now. And it's because I had that initial conversation. And being honest with you, I've had lads saying you've saved their life, you know, it was in a really bad place, you know, you've no idea what you've done, wherever it might be. And actually seeing that message would nearly bring you to tears. If they had yeah. given me a check for 500 euro, what are you gonna do with it? Like, what's that mean? It it there's no yeah. there's no value to that where actually somebody coming back to you to say, You've no idea, but I think you actually have saved my life. Yeah. It's something that would bring tear to your eye. And you and you can actually be proud of what you've done. And I think I never wanted to be seen as some sort of charlatan that knew everything and was because we're not, we're just a couple that lost yeah. weight and we can share what's worked for us, mightn't work for somebody else, but we can share what's worked for us with no guarantee that it's going to work for you, but actually giving you the belief that if you follow these guidelines or if you actually believe in yourself and take your own guidelines, you will actually achieve what you set out to do. And it also seems to me, Rob, that um, it's come back to you in different ways. Yeah. You know, it, the, the relationships, the connections that you have, your ability to perform in business. And, you know, I know you've changed roles recently from the Dublin Chamber to <laughs> into recruitment now. Um, but it seems to me like that's where some of the payoff has, has also happened for you in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I mean, I was always a confident enough person and I was able to get up and speak. But actually, since I've lost the weight, I've probably become more confident. I've put yeah. myself forward to speak at other events. 
uh, the chamber has been a huge help to me and, and I have moved on only recently in the last month um, but it's been a huge help to me and I'm all about networking and teaching people how to network and making those connections um, but it's been a huge help for putting me forward for putting me out there yeah. I always talk about building a brand and your own brand so what are you yeah. known for what are you the go-to person for you know what, what do people think when you walk in the room and generally they're looking when they come over to me they're looking for tips on weight loss they're looking for do i know somebody in this business yeah. that i can connect them with and i'm always happy to do that so you're known as that person that in whatever way as fluffy as it sounds that can actually help people whether they're in business or they're trying to lose weight and it's generally a little bit of both that you get now yeah. mainly now in the last few years it's been more about the business side of things the networking yeah. getting out there connecting people but it has it absolutely has helped me build up a brand it's you know people will come i was at pendulum summit last week and people were coming over to me saying you're that guy that lost weight and i'm like yeah well it's three or four years ago now but you're probably right i am that guy but yeah you, you still get remembered for it and it yeah. still allows people to approach it but it does give you that sort of confidence that, that you've built up a brand and you're and you're known for whatever reason and Dublin is small especially in the in the business uh sector and, and wherever you're, you're out at generally people would know you for something or recognize you be it on LinkedIn or wherever they recognize you and it's easier to approach people as well so it's opened many doors by doing an awful lot of training now as I say around networking an awful lot of teaching yeah um whether it be business students how to network whether it be companies on on their staff that that try to network a little bit better and just opening different doors. It's open different doors for me. So me opening doors for others has opened doors for me as well. And I always yeah. said that about networking. It's always something that comes back. You know, the more you give, the more you get. It might be in six weeks time. It could be in six years time. You'll get something back from something kind that you've done. Um, and I've always been that way inclined. I've always been that way yeah. in thinking that, you know, the more people that you help, the, you know, the more likable you become. And I always, you know, you always want to be that person that people like, not that person that people, if they see it in a room, they avoid you. And and for me, that's that's the best. I'm trying to be the best that I can be. So you're in a sales and a business development role, and you kind of alluded to this all, all, already. But what in terms of the weight loss journey that you've on, what has that taught you about and what have you brought from that into how you approach work and business and, and sales? Yeah, I think, I mean, I always link it back to the same thing. When you start off the week, you have your, you know, you have a weekly target, you have a to-do you have a to do list. So you have your target, you have your goals, you, ha you have your, your daily habits, you have your, you know, your commitment to what you're doing and you have your accountability to, at the end of the week. And I think that can be linked whether you're doing a sales job or as, as I am here in, the, in a director's role now that you're looking over the team. So what can they do? What can I help them improve? So it, it's all linked to the same thing of having those numbers and whether they're numbers on the scales or numbers of what you're eating or numbers of calls you have to do, it can all be linked together. But making sure I always have a to-do list. I always try and encourage people. We'll have our, our daily calls with the team to see what are we doing? What can we do more of? What's working well? Sorry, what, what, are, we, what are we doing? What's working well? What can we do more of? And going by that all the time and giving them that sort of encouragement. I'm a great believer in encouraging the team and, and what can I do to help you? Like, yeah. Can I make that introduction to somebody that you, you're looking to fill a job in? You know, can I open that door for you? How can I help you? And offering that help rather than giving everybody bollockings and you should be doing this and you should be doing that. Because what happens then is everybody gets fed up. And if it's on a weight loss side of things, people stop what they're doing. Yeah. You actually... I always go back to if I have a bad week in weight loss, I know I have had a bad week. It's because I ate, you know, the kids three Easter eggs that I shouldn't have eaten. So, <laughs> you know, you know what you have to do to fix a problem. So if you know that and identifying it and acting upon it is half the battle. But I, I'm, I am in, in, in work as well. I'm a, I'm a great believer in encouraging the staff and getting the most of, of the people that are here, making them happier, making the, the, the workplace happier for them and um, that they can come in, enjoy what they're doing, achieve their, their goals at the end of the month and then get rewarded for it. And obviously in a business role, you're awarding your staff by the money that they're earning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. And my last question, what's the one piece of advice you would give to anyone looking to live well and perform better? I would say start now. So whatever you're trying to do, start. Don't think about it too long. Um, but any changes that you're trying to make, make them realistic, nothing extreme and something that you can do in six months, in six years time. So just 
daily habits that you can change, small things that you can change. And if that means having your porridge before you go out and to work in the morning so that when you get in to have your coffee and work, you're not having the scone and the bun yeah. and the sausage roll or wherever. Where they, so those little small changes that can become daily habits that you can change. But it's just really, really small because it's like everything, you know, if you try and give up too much or do too much, and that's why we all go back to the New Year's resolutions. People say, I'm going to join the gym in January. I'm going to go seven nights a week. you got to ask yourself, well, how many nights did you go in December? Well, yeah. none. Well, how are you going to go from zero nights to seven nights? Start in small. What can I do? Maybe one day a week. Can I go out for a small walk? Can I go out? I know when I started, um, I used to walk around Marion Square for 30 minutes every day. And some yeah. days I didn't, but most days I did. And that and that sort of up then to 45 minutes, you know, to an hour or wherever it is. But just getting into the habit of doing something every day, doing something small. I speak about habit stacking, which is one of my favorite things. And I, I had heard it. Um, I think it might have been Jerry as well that was talking about uh, habit stacking. So something that you're doing every day and how can you stack another good habit onto it? Yeah. I think the example was when, when somebody brushes their teeth, every time they brush their teeth, they use a, a floss then, so they'll floss their teeth as well. So you're stacking one habit onto another. But I always joke that I do it at the Nespresso machine. So great lover of coffee. I always have a cup of coffee in my hand. Yeah. But anytime I, I press the button on the Nespresso machine, I'll always try and do some form of 30-second exercise. So yeah. it could be squats. It could be star jumps. It could be running on the spot. But I just, and now anytime... What it's actually helped me do as well is cut it is cut down the amount of espressos I have as well because right. I kind of feel like I have to do that little thirty second yeah, yeah. second burst of exercise. So stacking something good onto something that you're already doing, and it could be if you're having you know your porridge, can you have some berries with it? You know, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily exercise or something with it. You yeah. know, it can just something that you do every day, stacking a good habit on top of that. So it's not right. if I'm having a point, then I'll have a cigarette. That's the opposite. <laughs> but it, it's the same theory. You'll find an awful lot of people yeah. will stack a bad habit onto a bad habit. Do you smoke? No, I'm not really a smoker, but you're smoking now. I only smoke when I'm having a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's it's the opposite of that. Adding another good habit onto it, a daily habit that you already have. You know, yeah. it's all these basic things that we all know, but actually doing them is just, for some of us, doing these things that we know can be so hard so it's just starting to do them again it's it's not rocket science dave you're not going to get any rocket science from me but actually just doing the things that we know acting upon that knowledge that we already know yeah and um, because everybody knows if, if, if everybody's trying to if anybody's trying to lose weight they know what they have to do you know i'm really going to lose weight and then you're at a birthday party and you're eating cake when i thought you were trying to lose weight yeah but, yeah, but look at the cake it's a chocolate biscuit cake it's lovely so like, are you trying to lose weight? Or are you telling yourself you're trying to lose weight? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, no, Rob, thanks a million. Uh, that's been uh, just amazing. Um, and it's funny, just reflecting on, on what you were saying there, you're right. Um, it's not about rocket science. And, and I don't, you know, I don't come to you for rocket science. And no, I, I don't say that in a bad me. way. Yeah, um, but that's what's so amazing about it. It's your, it's your, it's your ordinariness that is extraordinary um and that's what i love um so thanks very very much for for joining me and uh, there's been loads in that you're a ball of energy and enthusiasm and passion and uh it's infectious so thanks a million pleasure as always dave